Hi, everybody. I'm Kelly Harrell, and you're listening to What in the Weird, in which I talk about various aspects of the runes, animism, and shamanism, which for me are pretty much all intertwined. The weekly rune came out to Patreon folks this morning. For those who are subscribed to the free version at my website, soulintentarts.com, and thank you for that, it will be out tomorrow morning. If you don't know what the weekly rune is, and you've got to check it out, it covers the half-month runes, what the rune means, what it brings, how to apply its insight to everyday life, and how to bring that seasonal awareness more deeply into your spiritual studies. I'll talk more about how you can subscribe to it at the end of this episode. So in the last episode, we've moved fully into the runic new year with Fehu. We talked about tending assets, which is essentially what funds us, what feeds us to do what we do here, and how we must be actively engaged with what feeds us in order to meet the challenge of the first et, which is to be a fit spirit in form. Like, not to just be born and show up, but to use the resources we have to recognize them and use them to better ourselves to bolster how we show up in and to the world. This week, we're moving into Aros, which, after the grounded earthiness of Fehu, is a somewhat abrupt shift. Many associate Aros with the body and with the feminine. I would take that deeper and suggest it refers to Adomla and how we wild. I'm not the person who just automatically associated Aurors with Adumla. This is an, an ancient association, but it's one that kind of gets left behind in the way that a lot of modern runesters work with the runes. So what do I mean when I say how we wild? Adumla is the feminine aspect of the Old Norse divine, where Imir is the masculine aspect. I would argue there's interconnected androgyny between the two. Um, a lot of people indicate Imir as being androgynous. I, I think there's a secret link between him and Adumla that is not automatically spelled out in the hi historic text. But you know, that's just kind of my own personal side note. But I think that in Adumla represented through the Aurochs, who literally nursed the world into being from the void, the thing to know about her is that she has no indicated beginning. It was either not recorded anywhere, which it isn't. She's not specifically attested in any of the ancient Old Norse texts, though she has remained an uncontested aspect of oral traditions and lore through the European North. So really, that means that she was powerful enough that she didn't have to be written down. She's sustained in our consciousness. What does that mean regarding Aurors? I think saying Aurors is just about the body is selling short that connection to Arumla, to Orox, and to the unconscious power that we all have to create ourselves. Aros is the reminder that the body is the temple in which all of that magic happens. In the modern spiritual world, the New Age, the body gets cast aside. It's like body, mind, spirit, but really all the emphasis is put on spirit. It's on soul, which is completely omitting that everything, everything must be filtered through the body. The body is why we're here. It's how we're here. It's how we're able to accomplish the things that the soul needs to do. So how do we accomplish our soul's needs? The thing to remember about Aros is its focus isn't on the outcome of our creative effort. It's on the power that manifests it. It's not about what we do or how it takes shape, but that we honor the deeply unconscious creative process that drives us. Because it's such a liminal force, because it is so deeply ingrained in us that we can take it for granted or forget it's there or have it domesticated out of us, Aros is difficult to communicate in or through words or context. It's felt. 
So how do you know when you feel errors? I would rephrase that question as, what would my perspective on myself or fill in some other dynamic, what would my perspective on myself have been when I was five years old? I always ask that question when a rose comes up in a rune cast, because at that age, you know what you want. And, and usually you're not afraid to say it. So there's no inner hesitation. There's no censorship. There's no self-doubt. And the domestication at that point is at least not completely rooted. By the time I was five, I had already learned to hide my power from others. But I wasn't yet capable of hiding it from myself. I still embodied a deep truth of who I was and what I wanted. And that's the key feeling of errors embodiment. It isn't found in doing. It's not in action. It isn't found in the result or the outcome of what you do. It's found in a deeply animistic state of embodiment of yourself, embodiment of a creative project, of whatever focus is needed. So for this half month, sit with what it means to embody yourself. How many selves do you have? First of all, it sounds like a silly question to ask on the surface, yet, mm, is it? Can you still cut to the chase of what you really want? What stops you from doing so? And what fears do you have around embodying your full self? Be sure to check out the rest of the Aurora's Half Month Runecast this week to get the full story. It will be out tomorrow morning. You can subscribe to the free version at my site, which is soulintentarts.com, and you can find the image of the rune cast there so you can see the rest of the runes. I've had several people ask me what the difference is between the free and paid versions of the weekly rune. So at Patreon, you can receive the rune cast on Sunday instead of Monday, and it goes straight to your inbox to give you the full details on the RuneCast and how it relates to the current season. It includes introspective tips for how to work with the dynamics it addresses and definitely a deeper dive into the runes themselves and how their meanings form the narrative of the week. So if you want to see an example of a full weekly RuneCast, you can find the cast for the summer solstice at Patreon by doing a search for the weekly rune. That'll give you an idea of what a full paid weekly rune looks like as opposed to the one that you can get by subscribing through my website. The image of the rune cast is always also on my Instagram account, which is Kelly Soul Arts. However you support the weekly rune, know that I appreciate it. I love doing the rune cast. I love writing it up and it just thrills me that other people find meaning in it as well. That's it for this episode. If you have questions or insights about Eros or how it shows up in your life, feel free to email me at kelly at soulintentarts.com or you can call in through the Anchor app, which you can download from Android or Apple. And you can also check out earlier episodes by downloading them from Google Play or iTunes, and they're on several other platforms also. If you get a chance, do check out Everyday Animism, which is a podcast that I co-host with a couple of other lovely ladies, also on Anchor. You can learn more about me and my work by visiting soulintentarts.com. I'm Kelly, and this has been What in the Weird.